Hello everyone. Um, I am um, Natalia Atkins. Um, I'm from from IMOS down here in Hobart. So IMOS is an integrated marine observing system and um, I think I put my hand up a little while ago to, to speak um, on vocabulary reuse within, within the vocabularies that I help to manage. Um, I'll sort of, um, only a short talk, but, um, and I'll keep it, I'm not a very technical person anyway, but I'll keep it kind of um, sort of um, more sort of the broad concepts and, and just sort of an overview of, of our experience um, and the way that we do things here. So I'll give a bit of an introduction to, to the AODN and IMOS. I'll speak a bit about the AODN vocabularies that we have, um, a touch on um, some governance um, um, that we have here, um, an introduction to the BODC, and I'll explain who they are uh, when once we get there. And then I'll have a little bit of an end in one of our vocabularies, um, which does um, reuse uh, vocabulary terms from another vocabulary. So I'll sort of um, go into that one in a bit more um, information or a bit more depth. So, so first, I'm going to the integrated observing system is one of the increased um, capabilities in Australia. So we're, um, the marine-based, um, one of the marine-based ones. So here's just, I mean, it's not relevant to vocabularies, but just an idea to, to sort of look at the, the, the range of data that we're dealing with. So we, we have a number of um, facilities that are collecting data for us in the marine space. So um, basically covering, spreading uh, over biological, chemical and phys physical um, parameters. and I actually form part of our data management facility, which is called the AODN, which is the Australian Ocean Data Network. So that's sort of just a bit of an overview, um, just so that you, you know where we're coming from um, and what we're here to sort of provide to users and what we need to describe with our vocabularies. So here at the AODN, um, we're one of the early um, organisations that used uh, Research Vocabularies Australia through uh, ARDC um, and here um, are some details on um, a few of the vocabularies. We do have um, a number, a couple of others, but these are the main ones that uh, we uh, publish and so just give you an overview of the, um, the size of each of the vocabularies. So we've got um, um, a few of these here. Um, so how many concepts are in each of uh, the vocabularies, what version number we're up to with those. And then, of course, this is about, uh, you know, we're sort of touching on reuse um, of vocabularies. Um, I've listed under each or identified under each um, particular uh, vocabulary where we reuse terms from. And as you can see that, um, that well, most of them are from, the BODC, which is the British Oceanographic Data Centre, and I, like I said, I'll explain a little bit more about them shortly, but um, we're pulling terms from various different places within the BODC, and we also have some overlap with some other organisations, but you can see there's quite a um, diversity there, um, and some, some vocabularies reuse all their terms, some um, partially, so there's sort of a breadth in what we do there. So. Um, and like I said um, in the introduction, I'm gonna focus in on um, the instrument vocabulary that we have. Um, it's sort of a somewhat sort of large one with 272 concepts in it. We're up to this version 2.1 and we reuse terms from two of BODC's uh, vocabularies online. So I'll touch on that later. So um, before I sort of go into that sort of uh, side of things, I wanted to sort of give an introduction to we use the vocabularies um, within at the AODN. So here's a screenshot of a metadata record um, in GEN Network. Um, it's quite small text, you don't need to worry about it too much, but um, the organisation vocabulary we use to mark up um, details and contact details of people. Within our keywords, we also use the organisation vocabulary to identify the different facilities uh, within IMOS. We mark those up in keywords. And we also have information on data parameters in our metadata records. And we pull the information from our, our discovery parameter um, vocabulary. 
we have a platform vocabulary and an instrument vocabulary. And whilst I haven't um, circled it, we also um, have our units of measure. So we, we pull all these terms from a controlled vocabulary. So we um, do things that way with the metadata. So, and then for those that are familiar with the AODN portal, um, this is a, a, a way of um, discovering and accessing um, a large portion of our data holdings. So not everything is here, but um, a great portion of, of IMOS data is here. So, um, and I should have touched before too that um, whilst the AODN manage uh, the IMOS data that is coming in from the different facilities, we also provide access um, and discoverability of all other, um, well, not all other, but you know, a lot of other marine resources and data collected by other organisations through the Australasian region. So, and the AODN portal is one of the main ways of discovering some of that data. Not all of it's discoverable there, but we do have everything in our metadata catalogue. So the, the parameters, or oh sorry, the vocabularies that are marked up in the metadata are also used to, to drive our search um, feature when, when um, users are looking for a data collection. So um, they're able to use faceted search in with well, in regards to parameters, um, organisations, and platform and all this information is pulled from the metadata record and pulled from those controlled vocabularies that we manage. In terms of um, our concept uh, reuse, um, sort of, you know, our etiquette that we, we um, have set out. So um, a previous colleague of mine, um, Kim Finney, um, was instrumental in setting up a lot of our vocabularies initially with ARDC and has put together, we have a sort of an internal vocabulary governance guide that, that we refer to and, and we touched on, on what our, our reuse etiquette would be. Um, and so it sort of covers things such as um, vocabulary creators. So we're talking about us internally. Um, we're encouraged to reuse um, before establishing terms from scratch. Um, this reuse um, improves the potential for interoperability. And we've purposefully sought to reuse vocabulary terms where it's uh, appropriate to do so. In doing this, um, the original concept URLs have been retained so that the term resolves when um, each of those concepts is individually accessed to its original point of truth. And at the um, scheme level, the vocabulary scheme URLs, they resolve to the Research Vocabulary Australia endpoint and display all the concepts both with the AODN base name, so domain. So we do have concepts that we've um, uh, produced ourselves and then any other domain from which concepts have been borrowed. So we try to do that. So in terms of individual concepts, when we do create them, um, we use the concept URL as is. Um, description items such as uh, pref label and definition are uh, copied uh, for the concept's origin. And then we make sure that um, the publisher and source um, identify the original publishing entity so that we make sure that information is, is captured within the concept. So I mentioned before that um, the majority of our uh, vocabularies um, reuse terms from vocabularies from from the BADC, so the British Oceanographic Data Centre. Um, they're based in the UK and they operate uh, NERC Vocabulary Service, so National Environment Research Council, so um, which provides access to a range of controlled vocabularies and they um, cover a broad spectrum of disciplines of relevance to the oceanographic and climate uh, community. So within their, their vocabulary server, um, there's a range of management of those vocabularies. Some are totally managed by the BODC, others are managed on behalf of other organisations and um, some are, are fully managed by external um, entities. So there's a range of um, vocabularies on access or able to be accessed there. So I mentioned that um, to sort of sort of delve a bit more into one of those specific uh, AADN vocabularies. Um, just sort of explain a little bit more our sort of our workflow and our, our use of um, external vocabularies in, in this. So, um, so this uh, relates to the AODN instrument vocabulary. Um, 
We've published that on Research Vocabularies Australia. That's the URL for that. And I'll give you a, show you a screenshot of that shortly. And it reuses terms from two of BODC's vocabularies. One is LO5, which is their device category. So it's kind of more at the top level, the concept. So more of a, um, a broader concept level. And then L22, which is, which is more specific and sort of more at the um, description of models and um, manufacturer details. So um, in terms of our vocabulary, our top concepts uh, borrow terms from LO5 and our narrower concepts uh, use terms from L22. So here is a look at the AODN um, instrument vocabulary in Research Vocabularies Australia. Um, sort of the landing page for that, you can see um, we've had several uh, versions since we um, produced this vocabulary. Uh, we're up to version 2.1. And then if those that are familiar with Research Vocabularies Australia, you can have a look at the terms within that vocabulary and search within them further down that page. So I've got a, a screenshot of that one as well. So this is sort of just a, a snippet of, of the concepts that we've got within this vocabulary. So like I said, the, the top level concepts that we have there are things such as, you know, sort of a, a category level um, uh, instruments, so things such as flow meters and flow cytometers. And then our narrower concepts um, get down into the, the details about models and um, uh, manufacturer details. So here's an example of, of um, the seven fluorometer um, narrow concepts that we've got in this vocabulary. And you can sort of see the sort of information um, that's sort of gathered from those in terms of the title. We have a look at um, one of those um, that the, the text is a bit hard to see, I'm afraid, but um, if you have a look at that, um, as previously said, in terms of what we what we do when we create these terms and by reusing these vocabularies. So um, we retain the URL from BODC. We make sure that we identify that the BOC is, is the publisher and what the source of that term is, which is, which is the L22 um, vocabulary from there. And then we also make sure that things such as definition um, also match up with what the BODC have put in their vocabulary. So, so this is what our term looks like through um, RVA and into CISBOX, so the display of that term. If you have a look at um, that term in the BODC, um, their vocabulary, so um, you can sort of see their, their pref label, their definition, I've just cut that off just for the ease of um, visualization and um, the, also the information that, that has already been determined by uh, this vocabulary is, is for this particular instrument, what are the, the broader instruments? Um, what are the instruments that are you know, the next level up? So this information is really useful for us when, when creating our, um, our vocab terms because all this work's already been done for us. They've, they've done all the mapping already. So um, in terms of broader and, and related uh, concepts within their um, their vocabularies. So, in terms of the workflow um, that that I that I follow um, within the instrument vocabulary, um, basically starts off with determining the need for a new term if it doesn't currently exist within the AODN um, instrument vocabulary. I search the relevant BODC vocabulary to check for current ex whether that that term um, currently exists in the BODC. So. And depending on whether this is a top level concept or a narrow one, I will look within the, the, the relevant um, uh, vocabulary. Um, the, here's sort of a, um, before when I sort of touched on, I sort of got to mention, there's sort of a couple of ways that you can access these vocabularies. There's a, and I had the URLs on a previous screen, um, you can either do this sort of a search interface, so you can look at concepts one by one. So you put in a like a keyword or something to discover it. But I find that they have a have a list of all their their concepts in in one page, and I find that that's a little bit easier to sort of tease out if that term. If you're not quite sure what maybe if they've um, used a different sort of name um, of that instrument to what you expect, um, because you can sort of um, sort of move up and down, move up and down this. Um, this page and sort of look at things like title and and definition to sort of 
really check whether that, that term is already in place in that vocabulary. So basically checking the relevant vocabulary to check to check if it's currently already there. If it's, if it is there, I then um, reuse that term. Um, but what is sort of the workflow if it's not present? And basically um, I will via email, I actually submit the details of the new term that is required. I provide just sort of some, some information about the name of the instrument as I understand it, but the next expectation that they may change this based on, on, on their current sort of naming protocols. Um, I'll provide them with details such as a, a web page with details about what the model and um, further information is. And this is actually quite a quick um, process, the turnaround. They're, they're based in the UK, so there is a bit of a time, time difference there, but it's in sort of in the order of days. And then they'll email back with a confirmation of a new instrument code and name of that, that, that concept. And then I can use that to, to then um, create terms um, in my vocabulary. So um, as before, um, I'll use the BODC URL. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll maintain that. And because of that, um, for those that are familiar with um, vocabularies within Research Vocabularies Australia, um, we do that in pool party. And with the, the need to retain the URL, um, we'll just re um, import that new concept into the pool party vocabulary. And then we'll reuse um, and ensure that the, the match up with the name, the definition, and then, um, like I said, the, the, the people managing those vocabularies have always already done the hard work in terms of mapping to top concepts. So um, whilst, um, you know, obviously it's a lot quicker um, if I was to sort of put it in straight away, if the term was already there, the, the, the turnaround and um, isn't too onerous. So, um, and not, you know, you're not normally needing to get these new concepts in and, you know, new versions of vocabularies published really quickly. So um, just that sort of delay in things isn't, isn't a concern for us. So, and obviously then, um, you know, with the reason terms, we're not having to worry too much about um, governance of that, that particular, um, those concepts and the concepts within the larger vocabulary. So um, we find this quite a useful um, process for us um, and nothing too onerous. So. And that was all I had to say. I did put a question slide there, but as Rowan said, I will um, available for questions after Peter's talk. So.